The Marvel's Avengers War for Wakanda expansion is coming out this August and I've got a lot of reasons to be excited for it, but I'm also a little bit nervous about this expansion and what it's going to mean. Today on the show, I'm going to give you a little bit of a breakdown for the War for Wakanda and why I'm worried. That episode for all of you is right now. So August, sometime in August, this expansion DLC is going to come out. By the way, welcome to Assemble on Mac. Good to see you. Good to have you here on the show. So it's coming out in August, but we don't know really a specific date yet. It's the time of the recording. It is July 20th. It's hot outside. It's sticky out here in Canada. We get like two months where it's just blistering hot. It's disgusting. And then it rains. Then we get snow in like October. It's very silly land we live in. Now I'm excited for War for Wakanda. I I've been excited about the trailer and the hype and the voice acting and there's a lot of the little tiny crummy details that we've been, not crummy, the crumbs, the crumbs, breadcrumbs that we've been getting for this game, for this expansion. I'm tired. Entertainment Weekly had a breakdown of the actual War for Wakanda expansion touting that originally we were looking at a, a total of 25 hours in length, which was incorrect. It's actually expected to be around seven to 10 hours, 7.5 hours. I hear seven to 10 hours roughly in that time frame for this expansion for players to be able to beat it. Now that could entail the grind because it is ultimately a, a looter grind game that we run around and we open up chests and we're going to go to Wakanda and they've given us the illustrations of what the new loot boxes are going to look like in the chests and a little bit of the, the snapshots of what the world is going to look like too. These things have Matt excited. I am very much in favor of that. I like that they are not, as they said, not utilizing and reusing any assets from the rest of the Avengers game. Everything is done net new. It's gonna allow for a really, really fresh experience, I think, when we're going through Wakanda. And we get the voice of Kratos. Christopher Judge is actually going to be voicing Black Panther in this game. And that is very exciting because he is immensely talented. And I think that's just a huge get and it will, it will give the game and the story and the narrative a little bit more weight. It will actually give it a little more character. And that piece really does have me excited. And seeing the actual like illustrations and the photos of what the world will look like, what Wakanda will look like, a little bit of a cinematic teaser trailer that we're getting, understanding that we are going to be getting two different bosses to battle within Wakanda. And as a writing consultant on the Miles Morales game, we have Evan Narciss, and I hope I'm pronouncing his name properly, but he is actually going to be one of the actual narrative consultants on the War for Wakanda as he's done work for not only Miles Morales in the video game industry, but he's also done some of the uh, Black Panther comic books uh, just a few years ago. So all these pieces are feeling good. These are all feeling like they're in a very good space in a very healthy space. And frankly, we're getting the War for Wakanda expansion earlier than I even thought. I actually originally predicted that we would be getting this thing come late October, November, just based off of the initial timeline and how they stretch this out. But the team at Square is actually doing a pretty good job of actually trying to give us content on a regular basis right now. We're seeing some of the bundle packs when it comes to cosmetics, nameplates, and credits that they've just released as of yesterday. They push those out, which is nice to be able to have a little bit of more of a bundle option when you want to be able to pick up, say, the Iron Man skin, nameplate, and the actual credits attached for a certain amount. You feel like you're getting a little bit more value there. The cosmetics are still an issue, in my opinion, because they are still priced very high. And I do have a concern that this would actually follow suit when it comes to the War for Wakanda, and we would see the similar thing happen during this DLC. I would not be surprised if we're going to get a Black Panther that is in purple and a Black Panther that is just slightly modified and recolored, and they're going to charge us 20 bucks for each skin because it's going to be brand new DLC. So with incredible voice acting behind it, great narrative consulting teams from previous amazing projects like Miles Morales, a healthy timeline for them to actually create this expansion, a pretty hefty and a healthy DLC size journey that we're going to be able to go on within the War for Wakanda, looking at around seven to 10 hours, that's a massive amount of content for us to enjoy. But my concern is that it's still going to feel short. If I strip away all of those good elements there that are really, really positive to hopefully put this thing in, and it's in a new level and raise the game overall, my concern is still that it's going to fall short in the core fundamental issues with the game. Because if it is seven and a half hours to you know 10 hours of the Wakanda expansion, you're left with actually just looting and grinding as always. And that's fine because hopefully you're gonna tell a pretty healthy, compelling story 
for that time, I do worry that if I just mainline the campaign piece of this and the story elements, I worry that it could be finished within a matter of hours. And I'm talking four to five hours and the rest of it just being exploring Wakanda. That might be okay, and frankly, if it's a little bit healthier in terms of a narrative, in terms of a story, than that we got of Kate Bishop, as well as when we got with Hawkeye expansions, if it's beefier than that, I'll be pretty satisfied as long as it's telling a good story. We can have short campaigns and short DLC that are running us anywhere from five to six hours. As long as it's telling a really good story, gameplay is tight, and it feels good, then I think we'll be pretty satisfied. Look at other titles that are just entirely different realms. Like we can play small bite-sized games that charge us 10, 20, $30, and they might have a five to eight hour campaign total. And that's the experience. And sometimes those are fantastic. It could be something similar to this where we're getting a healthy expansion piece and it's going to turn out really well. But my concern is that we are going to get past the initial campaign piece, run through it all, and we are left with the same hindrances that the core game already suffers from. I do like that the assets are not being reused. I do like that we're getting brand new characters to be able to bring in there with Black Panther to be able to put him into the rest of the missions and the hives and everything else that we have in the core game itself. And then it feels like, and based on the interview Christopher Judge did, and then when he did the uh, Twitch stream with the community directors and community team over for Square, it does feel like Judge is trying to put his own spin and they're trying to do their own version of Black Panther and not necessarily stick to what we got within the MCU, which is a good thing because Chadwick did such an amazing, incredible job with that character and becoming that character that you don't wanna try to mimic that. It's gonna always follow short. So it's good that Judge is gonna try from a voice acting standpoint, tried to take on a different perspective, give us a more mature version of Black Panther and put their own flavor and spin on this. And that's something that the game did fairly well in its own right from its own original campaign. And it didn't feel like it landed quite as well as they wanted to. But there were moments where you felt like you had these individual characters and this Avengers team and felt different enough than that of the MCU. The only other thing, and let me know in the comments below if you agree or not, but the one thing that I do stick to that I'm concerned about with this expansion is the lack of gameplay. We haven't seen anything yet, and we are presumably one month or less away from this game. If this comes out on August 20th, for example, and that is literally one month to the day, we haven't seen any actual gameplay Black Panther in action, using any of the power-ups, using any of his moves, developing his skills, combos, finishers, nothing like that. That has me concerned because if this has been done and baked and ready to go for quite some time, then I kind of feel like why wouldn't you want to be able to hype this up even more versus replaying the same gameplay trailer for us several times over. This is supposed to be a very, very large, substantial piece of content, and it sounds like it is. But if we are not showing off any new mechanics or anything to do with the character we're going to play as this late in the game, that is the biggest piece that has me worried is we are not getting that gameplay element in action to see what it looks like when Black Panther is just roaming around in the world, the types of enemies that we're actually going to be fighting. We don't have any glimpse of that. It could be Square is just trying to keep everything really, really tight so that players can really enjoy this expansion piece. But I from my perspective and where I'm sitting as someone who's played the game since day one, because they had so many problems with this title month over month and COVID hit and threw off scheduling and everything else that they need to regain that trust consistently of the player base and get them hyped and get them excited. And that's where I think that their marketing team needs to step in a lot more and really try to push this thing and give fans a little bit more and maybe they will and maybe in the next couple of days or over the next week or two we are going to get even more information coming out about this but i feel like what square and the team for marvel's avengers really need to do is to show players show fans why this expansion is great what they are excited about and not keeping too much of a lid on everything we don't have to get into all the bosses and what we're going to experience but Give me a minute or two of Black Panther out in Wakanda and fighting some enemies so I can get an understanding of how he traverses and his movement and again, his finishers and power ups. Like I want to be able to see what this character is going to actually look like so that I can get more hyped and more excited about what I could be experiencing in August. And I think you need that with a game like this. You want to be able to show off more and more and more. This would also have me worried about Spider-Man and what they 
would eventually bring to the table down the road into 2022. If Spider-Man is still scheduled to come out with this game and they don't drop it completely, and I don't think they will, I think they will go ahead with bringing us Spidey. But what I would worry about is that how this performs. If this expansion does not perform and it doesn't give fans enough variety and they don't check it off as a big win, this is really going to hurt them, especially if you don't see the consistent player base coming back for this expansion and playing even more of the game. So many people dropped off after the initial game was released. They never went back to any of the other DLC that came out. They may come back for Black Panther, but then they might bounce after a few hours if it doesn't grab them. So I think the story and the narrative and campaign piece is going to be crucial for this game's success. I just wish then why I'm worried is I wish that they would show us some gameplay footage, actually having Black Panther in action and showing off a little bit more to get us more hyped and more engaged with this game and what this expansion could look like and what it will mean going into the rest of the year or past September and then into 2022 of what that roadmap is going to actually look like. But let me know in the comments below, what do you think about the War for Wakanda expansion? Are you excited for it? What else do you need to see from this expansion? expansion to get you excited. Thank you so much for watching everybody here on Assemble. I'm Matt. Thank you for joining us today on the show. And as always, thank you all for assembling with us. See ya.